the same dirty talk is immediately just like, it's almost like it puts up these walls of barriers of like, I can't do that. I don't know how that's not even in my nature. So what am I supposed to do? So I know you mentioned trying to find a new name for it. So yeah. I have the perfect name for it. All right. You're listening to Get Your Marriage On, the fun and spicy podcast, bringing you new tools and fresh ideas so that you can be the sexiest couple you know. Let's get one thing out of the way right up front. Dirty talk isn't dirty. It's actually an intimate form of communication to let your spouse into your heart and mind. It's a way to express the erotic part of you with your lover. It's about using your words to arouse. The nice thing about married sex is that it's a place you can go where things don't always have to be so cleaned up. You don't have to be so buttoned up. You can be less formal with each other and use language with each other you wouldn't use in any other context, creating more arousal, intimacy, and excitement. If dirty talk, and I put that in air quotes, is something you've always found awkward or have no idea where to start, you're in for a treat. This episode with Melanie Studley from the Anatomy of Us podcast will hopefully help you and your lover discover a new way to draw closer together and have some sexy fun. I want to let you know that my team and I have created an amazing resource designed for couples that want to enjoy more arousing language in their marriage. So this resource includes a workbook to guide you in finding your unique form of dirty talk without feeling dirty about it. It comes with examples of phrases you can try on, scenario ideas, and so on to help you brainstorm your way of using arousing language that feels natural to you. You can get this resource at getyourmarriageon.com. And now for the episode. Hey, Melanie, it's, you know, it's so good to have you back on the podcast. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. It is always a blast to chat with you, always. Yes. So kind of for our audience to get to know you a little better and to kind of break the ice. And this is a sex podcast. So let's have some fun here. Mm -hmm. I want to hear the story about when you and Seth walked into the sex toy, the sex toy shop in Hawaii. Okay, so I've got to set the scene. We were in Maui recording a podcast for Jeff and Alyssa Bethke. They have a marriage podcast called, I think it was called Anything and Everything at the time. And so we had already been married, I don't know, 13, 14 years at the time. Never gone into a sex shop ever, never, ever, ever. Never would have thought about it. And there was one in this like little area in Maui. And I was like, okay, there's no kids with us. This is a unique opportunity. Maybe we no can- No one will see us walk in. No, yeah, no one, our neighbors aren't going to see us. No one will see us. So I'm like, let's just give it a go and see what happens. And Seth, I said it to Seth and he, I mean, I think his jaw hit the floor, right? And he uh. looks at me and he's like, okay. And so we turned to go into the sex shop and it was closed. <laughs> <laughs> so we never even went. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So we still haven't gone to this day. <laughs> but the reaction <laughs> it was good we, i would have gone in had it been open but it yeah. wasn't that was good that's great today we get to talk about um using our language to arouse aka mm -hmm. dirty talk and this is this is prompted uh selfishly a little bit because i am awful and awkward at it <laughs> and i'm not alone because i get instagram messages and whatever like i got this one from a wife that said Hey, my husband really wants me to talk dirty to him, but I have no clue where to start. We are nervous um, and I feel embarrassed and awkward about it. Mm -hmm. Can you help us? You know, can you help me? And I'm like, that sounds like a great topic for a podcast episode. And I know just the person to call. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. That, and we do get, we get the same questions as well. Like people are like, this is a thing I know my spouse likes. I don't know how to do it. What do I do? So I'm glad we're talking about it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first of all, let's set some definitions here. What is quote unquote dirty talk? Ah, oh, I know that it's such a bad name and I wish it didn't exist, but dirty talk is essentially like talking during intimacy that enhances the experience, right? And uh -huh. what I think is so unfortunate about it, what we we talked a little bit about before we started recording, is this idea that in the title of it is dirty, right? The descriptor of it is negative. That's a very negative vibe, right? Yes. Um, I think especially for women, you don't want to be seen as dirty. Like that's a not good thing. Um, but really all it is, is using language, using words to help sort of ignite more passion, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So dirty talk really isn't dirty. No. 
No, it doesn't no, have to be. And that's, yeah, I think that's where people get really tripped up is that people are like, I want to do this thing. It's dirty, but I'm not necessarily dirty. Like I'm, and I'm going to use the word like perverted. I say perverted all the time. Cause one, cause I think it's kind of funny, but like, uh -huh. I'm not a perv. So I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to yes, say uh -huh. pervy stuff. So <laughs> the, the name dirty talk is immediately just like, it's almost like it puts up these walls of barriers of like, I can't do that. I don't know how that's not even in my nature. So what am I supposed to do? So I know you mentioned trying to find a new name for it. So yeah. I have the perfect name for it. All right. And, it, and this is, is going to go name? like, this is going to go with my longer version of what, what I truly think it should be and how uh -huh. it should be done. So it all ties in, but it's not dirty talk. It's sexy stories. Is sexy that stories. much better and more inviting? <laughs> That's much better. It even alliterates. Right. I know. I was all jazz when I <laughs> thought of it, but I think that that like sexy stories changes what it is. Cause really that's kind of what people are trying to get at with dirty talk, but it's a sexy story feels so much different and so much more like doable, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And it's intimate. It's not mm -hmm. something you openly like, <laughs> I don't know. It's reserved just for your special someone mm -hmm. who you're married to for the rest of your life. Like right. why not engage in language that's just reserved for the two of you? Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, um, why is it so awkward to engage in sexy stories? <laughs> I think because we have this idea of that, the like old model of dirty talk is so ingrained in our heads. And I think we have to unlearn what we believe that that means. Um, and mm -hmm. I think so many people believe that dirty talk is like, so I'm going to kind of use the analogy of like these, the arousal cycle. So if you're talking about dirty talk in air quotes, uh -huh. It seems like the most explicit, like the, it's the nasty nitty gritty right away. And yeah. so talking about that when you're not even doing it or ready to do it, like that, I think is what people have in their minds of like, because it feels go, out of context. Yes. It feels very out of context. It's like, mm -hmm. here we are We're you know, we're maybe we're just getting into bed and someone says, talk dirty to me. And you're like, oh my gosh, like, what does that even mean? Do I have to talk about like doing an act to you or whatever? And so I think it goes from like zero to 5,000. And that, I think that's what makes it so challenging for people. But if yes. we put it in the context of like a sexy story, which I'll talk about later, um, it's so, 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 so different and it's manageable. And it's like bite sizes that get to the main course for lack of a better word. <laughs> Gotcha. So if you're awkward about it, don't think I have to get to like five level 5,000 right off the bat. Like yes. you can ease your way into this. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, before we move on, I want to know what are the benefits of oh, sexy yeah. stories, arousing language? Because some, some of our listeners will be like, yeah, yeah, that's all fine, but why? I will. So when you asked me that, um, when you sent, so you sent me a Google doc, which I love. So I was looking through it and I got so jazzed because I don't know. I don't think we've even ever talked about this. Why would we have, but, um, I have done, I've listened to so many, um, so many podcasts and read so many books that talk about the benefit. And this is going to sound weird for just a second, the benefit of reading versus watching something. Now, why I'm saying that is if we're doing sexy stories with our partner, right. Formerly known as dirty talk, uh -huh. we are actually engaging more of our brain than if now I'm not saying that this is something you should do, but we're engaging more of our brain than if we even just watched pornography, right? Because we're, yes. uh -huh. when you're listening to someone talk or you're reading a book or whatever, you're, you're um, only consuming. You're, yes. But your visual, actually the visual part of your brain is creating. So it's a much more embodied experience than simply looking at something or, or like watching something because you're creating it in your head. And so what I love about the idea of sexy stories is it's an embodied experience versus I'm simply watching this thing or it's like the script that my spouse says to me. It's this like whole body thing. And if you're the partner who's creating the journey or the story or you and your partner are co-creating it, it's even that much more um, involved and embodied. So I think that um, that's why it's it's such an amazing it's such an amazing element to add into an intimate experience. But again, we have such poor names for it and then zero guide on how to do it. Right, right. Okay, so let's go back to that scene. You and your spouse are in the bed and they say, hey, will you talk dirty to me or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, right. Tell me a sexy like, story. So instead of freaking out, mm -hmm. what's the practical like first step you can take towards becoming more comfortable with, with right. the whole idea? So if you're brand spanking new to this concept, I think the best thing to do would be to prepare yourself ahead of time by having like, and this is what I, so 
there's a couple ways of approaching this. I'm going to do the like total newbie and then the like, maybe I have some experience, but I want to up my game. So if you're a total newbie, Uh I would pick, and this is something you do alone. You don't do this with your spouse, but you pick something that you are comfortable. One, number one, sharing. Number two, that actually turns you on as well. Um, and then number three that you know how to communicate. So let me give, I'm just going to like lay it out a few examples. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm going to give you examples. I think that's the best way to do it. So for me, uh, if you've heard any of my four, my former episodes recently on anatomy of sex, we talk about, or I talk, I did a solo episode about, um, women's arousal. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm just going to, I'm just going to go here because it works for sexy stories. I absolutely loved the movie. What was it called? Uh, it was the most recent one with Channing, Ch- Ch- oh my gosh, Channing, Channing. Tatum and uh-huh. what's that lady's name? Uh, it was called The Lost City. The Lost okay. City. Okay. Uh-huh. It's like an, an action adventure. It's got like uh-huh. Indiana Jones vibes, but uh-huh. it's super, super good. But they go to like a jungle, like a secluded jungle. And in, in one scene, they're dancing at night in this like pavilion and it looks like Mexico, right? Um, uh-huh. And so if I were to tell a sexy story, that's where I would place. So that's my set. So here's the rules for sexy story. You have to have a set and you have uh-huh. to use the senses. Okay. So it's all okay. S words. <laughs> so um, <laughs> the sexy stories need set and senses. So uh-huh. that's my setting. So r- again, right away, I'm telling you this because if, if I know that that setting is sensual to me, I'm Uh that much more aroused when I share it. I'm that much more into it when I share it. And it's going to be that much more easier. Like I'm not going to set my setting in a strip club because I'm not comfortable there, but I am comfortable like on a patio in Mexico with string lights and like tropical breezes and a dress like that, that I can get into. So that's the first thing you're going to pick a setting that works for you that actually turns you on and that you know you could share about. Right. Uh So that's, that's number one. Then you're, you're, you're just setting the stage. So use the senses. So we have the five senses, right? Sight, sound, smell, t- uh, taste, and touch. So mm-hmm. if I'm in a pavilion in Mexico, it's nighttime, there's candles, there's whatever. What do I see? I see string lights. I see like, maybe it's a little bit sweaty and I like it's hot out. And maybe uh-huh. my partner is like tiny bit of sweat. You know, it's like, you're just setting, you're, you're saying what you see. And that's going to, when you share this with your partner, help ignite their visual cortex, right? Even though they're not looking at it, they're imagining Mm -hmm. it. So you're Uh putting them into that setting that already kind of gets you fired up and then they're seeing it too. So you got to explain like, is there a table there? Is there, is it like a cobblestone, whatever? The next one is sound. What do you hear? So in the movie, there's um, uh, musicians playing like a guitar and I think a lady singing. And so Mm -hmm. what sounds do you hear? Do you hear like the streets, the street noise in the background? Do you hear like, are they they shutting the shop up and you hear the sounds of it closing? Do you hear the ocean, right? So you're doing what you see, what you hear. And then the next one is what you smell. Are there flowers Uh blooming? Like we were just in California like last week and there's beautiful... um, they have honeysuckles growing everywhere in California. I didn't know that. And it was just like this wafting sweet smells would just sort of roll past you while you're walking down the street. So what are you smelling? Is there a bakery nearby? Is there, is it the smell of your partner? Is it the, like that musky, like super great? I mean, assuming you're, <laughs> I, my husband is musky, maybe I smell <laughs> flowery or whatever. Um, but, ex, you know, explain what you're smelling and, you know, that's a, a huge sensual element. Um, and then taste. Are you eating something? Are you kissing? What does the kiss taste like? What does their skin taste like? If it's hot and you're in Mexico and you're sweating, is it salty? Like it's this, it's the expression and the sharing of all of those senses. And then you get into touch, right? So what are you, what are you touching? (laughs) Right. Uh Is it your partner's back? Is it their waist? Is it their arm? Do they have a flower that they're giving to you? Is it the fabric of their shirt or the nape of their neck? Like, so that to me is if you're a total newbie and you've never done this before, find a set like place that you want to share. Think of all of the sensory things. What are you seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, hearing, all of that, and then go into the story side of it, right? So I really highly encourage you, again, if you've never done this before, do sort of like a practice run in your mind. It doesn't have to be crazy. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to like do anything about it. Just practice it in your mind so that when you go to speak it, you're not like, oh, I've never said these out loud. I've never thought about it. I don't even know. Like you give yourself a little test run to get used to what that's like. Um, Uh And then I guess essentially if you're already 
a little bit experienced with sexy stories, then you can up your game from there. Just add more detail and all of that. But that's where got I would it. start. Got it. Got it. So when you're driving alone in the car at a red light, you're like, I'm gonna, this is a great opportunity to practice. Yes. And <laughs> you can this out loud. Uh-huh. Yes. You could even record it like on your phone if you needed to hear yourself saying it, if that helps you to like actually say it out loud or you can just uh-huh. say it to the dashboard, whatever. Um, but uh-huh. practicing it once is going to go a really long way for it feeling less awkward um, and uncomfortable. And I, I do want to like say that this, the pre thinking through, like if you're yeah. someone that you're like, okay, I schedule sex every Wednesday. My husband and I are intimate, whatever. Like if that's something that you do, this uh-huh. practice will help get you in the mood before you're even with your husband or oh, whatever, right. right? Your spouse. Uh-huh. So it's a total like, um, it's a pre- helpful tool. Yeah, yeah, it's pre-game something. Pre-game <laughs> workout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Uh, so why is delivery so important? Mm. Like, so you can go on Amazon and there's thousands of books, I'm sure, on mm-hmm. how to talk dirty or whatever. And they'll give you a bunch of phrases. And so you memorize it. Like, mm-hmm. why is delivery more like important? It's the not delivery, just memorizing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The delivery is the you part of it. It's you. And so uh, oftentimes it'll be like, you know, you'll get questions from listeners or whatever. It's like, how do I talk dirty? Like, do I need to sound like someone else? And there's all uh-huh. these preconceived ideas of like, do I need to sound like I'm a stranger? Do I need to talk weird, like husky and raspy Uh or whatever? And no, Uh you don't need to do any of that. Like, that's just something that maybe you've seen on TV or, or just was a a thought you had in your head. But really this is about you and your spouse enhancing what you already have together. And so the, the way that I look at the delivery aspect of it is that it's you enhanced. It's not, none of it is fake. None of it is forced unless that's what you're after. Now, some people could do sexy stories and want to sound like they're French or want to sound like they're from Iceland. I don't know. Iceland. Uh-huh. How do you even sound like they're from Iceland? I don't even know. Uh, like some- <laughs> With an Icelandic accent, <laughs> right, of course. Right, of course. <laughs> so there may be people who want to do that, and that's wonderful, but it is not a requirement that the delivery be this sort of like affected different thing. You know, it doesn't need to be set apart. It can just be you sharing a sexy story in a really like inviting way. You know, and I like what you're saying because you're saying you need to fit it into your personality. You're not trying to like become someone else or take mm-hmm. on a different persona. Mm-hmm. You're being you. Like if you if you're trying to pretend like something else, of course it's going to be awkward. It's going to be weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, absolutely. And it's just really unnecessary. It's not a requirement at all. And so again, I think it goes back to a lot of unlearning. We need to unlearn and and really ask ourselves, what do I think? sexy stories and dirty talk actually is. What do I think it is? Because it's going to be different for everybody. And then Mm -hmm. ask yourself, what do I not like about that? So what can I take out? So if I feel like I have to speak like I'm French, let's remove that and let's start somewhere new, you know? Uh So you're allowed to work on your French later if you you want to, but you don't have to. Yes. Um. And I would rather have you have success in like incremental stages than try to dive in sounding like you're from Paris and then it flops, you know? Uh huh. <laughs> right, right. And then you feel awkward, whatever. Yes. And I, I think in practice, it, it, this is just my experience. The attempt, like you going to the sex toy store with yeah. your husband, matters far more than actually like succeeding in getting in. Just the willingness to try and engage is has so much mileage. We, we forget about that. Absolutely. Chances are your spouse isn't going to critique you. Like, <laughs> right, right, right. Right. And I, and I think or, too, like, it's uh-huh. like learning to ride a bike, right? At, at some mm-hmm. point you can ride it with your eyes closed. It's the easiest thing ever. But for the first, how, however many times you tried, you were clumsy at it. So allow that, allow that space where it's going to be like a little bit clunky at first. And it's no big deal. Uh-huh. All right. Cool. Cool. So, uh, does, does, uh, do, does some like, so we talked about sexy stories where you're kind of painting a picture. There's also a bunch of arousing language where it's, it's more of like saying like, uh, in other words, like, Hey, I'm, I'm really into you or I, I really want you to do me right now or mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. other things like that too. Uh, can you talk on that a little bit? These are more like the one liners, the more, Almost like directions, Those kinds of things. right? Uh-huh. Statements or directions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think one of the things that, um, as you were saying that, that made me think of is there is definitely a place for asking questions within the realm of sexy stories 
then this is almost like a different, a different side of it. So let me kind of explain what I mean. So it, like we talked about earlier, like telling a sexy story, you're setting your, the place, the setting, the sights, the sounds, smells, blah, 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 all that stuff. But then uh-huh. kind of on the flip side, without a story, you're just doing uh-huh. like sexy talk to one another. Um, yes. You are welcome. This works really well if you're not sure what your spouse actually thinks about something. Don't assume they like what you like. And I'm not saying that in a mean way. It's more of an invitation of ask and say, hey, do you like it? Like, would you like it if I did X, Y, and Z? Like asking a question. And here's why it's important. They may not like it. (laughs) You can say, hey, would you like it if I... I don't know, sucked on your toe. <laughs> and they uh-huh. might be like, no, please never do that. Right. Uh-huh. And so then right. you, you've spared yourself embarrassment of like not just going in for the kill. Right. So uh-huh. there is, but also it is a safe way to approach a new idea without it being scary or weird or as vulnerable. So I will say that that's a great way to like get into, if you're new to the idea of talking about directives or sharing like, hey, I like it when you do X, Y, and Z thing, you can ask it in a question instead of just like, this is a thing I'm sure you like, let's do this. Like that might not be great, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and there there also is too, like knowing the nature of your spouse. So some spouses would really like to be told what to do or to, like have that sort of more an ag- aggressor, aggressive, like, like uh, even if it's something that they're not sure they'll like, they, they might enjoy the the sort of like feistiness of being told. But not everyone's like, I'm not like that. You are not going to tell me what you're going to do to me. <laughs> like, uh-huh. no thanks. We're going to have a conversation about it. And that to me is sexy to ask me if I like it. Ask me if uh-huh. I want to do it. And if I say no, don't, don't you dare make me. But not everyone is like that. So kind of like knowing the nature of your spouse, knowing the nature of yourself, and then being able to kind of put that into practice with statements like, I like it when you dot, 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 right? Or Mm -hmm. another thing too, is that's another great way that I like it when you is another great way to share with your spouse things you would like them to do more of without demanding it. You're just saying, I like it when you do that thing to me. And then they'll know, oh, I should do that thing more. Right. So it's, it's really inviting as opposed to why don't you ever do that thing to me? Right. (laughs) Right. So there's lots of ways to incorporate the like request um, comment stuff in there without it feeling so scary, I guess. Another thing that's the benefit, like what you just mentioned too, is this is also a safe place to give your spouse something in fantasy that Mm -hmm. you're not willing to give in real life. Absolutely. For instance, there's some sexual acts that we don't do with my wife and I together because of just reasons, uh, preferences. Yeah. Comfort level, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but we can give it to each other in fantasy, mm-hmm. meaning sometimes even during the act of sex, we'll be making up a sexy story together. It's like, it feels like improv sometimes, but like she's telling the story or I'm telling the story and it's incorporating these very erotic themes mm-hmm. between mm-hmm. us that we know we'll never act out in real life. Right. But for that moment, it's, it's, we're like, it really activates a part of your mind that's very erotic and it's, yeah. A big turn on. Right. That's like, beautiful. I don't think my wife and I will ever desire to have sex in a public right. park. Right. <laughs> like, ever. <laughs> like to actually do that. I'm, I'm, or on a roof of a house. I'm just mm-hmm. making up something kind of bizarre. Mm-hmm. Um, not that these are my actual fantasies, but if that was my actual fantasy, because that's my friend's fantasy, mm-hmm. um, uh, that we could actually like engage this in more using our language mm-hmm. as, as a way to kind of yeah. set that scene and whatever. So. Absolutely. And there's so much to say about that because our brains don't know the difference from what our imagination is telling us. I mean, think about watching a movie. You're watching a movie, like let's say you go and see the new um, like Spider-Man Thor movie or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah, uh-huh. Spider-Man. Right. And mm-hmm. you're like, oh my God, your whole body is responding to this thing that you're seeing with your eyes, which is not happening to you, but you're scared too because what if the building hits the car, blah, right? So our right. brains actually don't know the difference between what's what's imagined and what's real. And so what's so cool, and we all know this to be true because we felt it before. So it is really amazing to give, to use that to our advantage where, I mean, I, I will just share, this is explicit, but whatever. Um, like the idea of multiple partners. Well, what if I could multiply my husband? 
right? What if I had two uh-huh. of my husband? Like, that's a cool thought sometimes. <laughs> that, and yeah. that's a fantasy that we can talk about. That Of course, that's not going to happen. <laughs> like, that would never, uh-huh. wouldn't even be able to happen. But you can but, explore it in fantasy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it will engage all of the same body systems. Like, it will ignite everything inside of you. And so it's mm-hmm. such an amazing, like, safe loving way to uh, really deeply dive into intimacy in a new way with your partner. And it's really, uh, there's a lot of growth and trust that is built in that when you do this stuff, like respectfully and safely and in a loving way, I think, you know? Yeah, that's right. So um, another thing about dirty talk I've learned, it doesn't always have to be degrading. Because you probably read or hear about things like it's, some of it's kind of degrading. Right. (laughs) Yeah. If you get turned on by that, by all means, because mm-hmm. a lot of people do, there's something uh, sexy about the the naughty and the forbidden. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. but if that's not you, you don't have to like engage in that. Yeah, absolutely. I do think it's important to understand that. That I do, so not, two things. Number one, yes, many people actually do really enjoy that uh, degrading whatever, and that's fine, uh-huh. no big deal. But I do mm-hmm. encourage people to step beyond and see like actually, what would it look like if I pushed into really romantic intimacy and sexy story, like super romantic? What would that look like? That would be different. That's not something I know. That's not something I've seen in pornography or whatever. So I don't even know how to do that. That doesn't mean that it doesn't exist though. And it doesn't mean that it wouldn't be amazing, right? So like even um, expanding what you see as being arousing, right? So for example, yeah, we we kind of all go to like the baseline thing of like the most dirty, the fastest, you know. But what would it look like if we expanded that out to um and and feel free to come up with ideas too. Like I think this is a kind of a, a cool concept that I don't hear almost anything about. But like expanding what is arousing or like arousal inducing. And for me, it's like food and travel. Food, travel and novel things like skydiving or um, rock climbing. Like, so what if I tried to incorporate into my sexy story, these things Uh that I want to do any, like, I'm excited about these things anyway. I like rock climbing. I like Uh swimming and in the ocean, like incorporate that into your, like your whole story. And then, then you don't just have like a tiny narrow thing that you can go to. You have like the world of possibilities for sexy stories instead of just and then we were in the nasty bathroom and we were boning. (laughs) There's more to it than that. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's so funny uh, we were in the nasty bathroom and it was so cramped and <laughs> there's trash everywhere i know it's like the grossest scenario i, I can know. think of i don't know it's like oh this is not oh. a turn on yeah <laughs> and the flight attendant keeps banging on the door <laughs> Listen, sir, we're going to land soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't go there. <laughs> right. All right. So part of arousing language and sexy stories is using uh, different words for different things. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. kind of creating, and this is something very intimate, right? These mm-hmm. are words that you only use with your spouse or something like that. Can you talk on that a little bit? Maybe like... Yeah how to come up with words for each other, words for Mm -hmm. body parts, for Mm -hmm. different sex acts and and things like that. Yeah. So I think there's a couple ways of looking at this. And one one would be that culturally it's different from different places in the world. Like there is different slang. And I Uh want to start with with slang as like, I'm guessing most people are going to use slang as the foundation of these words that they will use in their sexy stories um, Uh because medical terminology sounds weird. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> unless, unless it sounds too clinical unless you're yep. into it um, right. unless, which unless whatever it's, uh, it's right yeah the doctor's <laughs> office now <laughs> that's really funny uh so i will say uh the one thing to and this isn't i don't mean like look out for it like it's bad something bad's gonna happen but just be aware that between genders some terms might feel degrading while others feel exciting. And you can Mm -hmm. figure that out again in conversation, in intimacy, you can ask, Hey, do you like it? If I call this thing a vet 
and your uh-huh. partner may be like, oh yeah, I totally love that. Or they might be like, you know, I'm not, I'm not super into that. And you can write uh-huh. it down. I know that there are like the apps and things like, like that. The where Intimately you can... Us app has yes. a part for this yes. very thing. Uh-huh. I think it's so brilliant. So like in Intimately Us, it goes through all the things. Like what do you want to call your breasts and your whatever, you're like all the things. Right, um, your because, penis. And, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So the, the having the slang that your partner feels comfortable with is helpful. Mm-hmm. Also though, um, learning new slang on purpose for the purpose of enhancing your intimate moments is also fun. So look That's through really those hot. things. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And you're like, well, I've never said that word before. or I didn't know that had a name, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. like, so I think incorporating <laughs> language, uh, like what we call things and acts even, uh, mm-hmm. bringing in new words and language and stuff like that. And, and, and finding like a good unifying ground there is super, super fun and helpful. Because you'd hate to like in the in the height of the moment, like blurt out that word right. you think is so arousing, and then it's like totally it's like a bucket of cold water on the other person. That and would, that can happen. Yeah, well. that can happen. So you want to? Um, there are just a couple of things. Again, do it. You can do it in the asking format. Do you like it when I call this thing or mm-hmm. that? You know. Right. And, right. But I will say too, if your spouse says a word that you're not used to hearing, I would say uh-huh. stay open minded. Don't immediately like. That has happened where I'm like, oh my gosh, my husband says that. <laughs> like, I've, uh-huh. that has happened. And I've been, it had like this tiny, tiny flicker of like, whoa, didn't know that was what he would say. But also, then I'm like, it's not a big deal. Like, that's just, again, cult, a lot of it is cultural because we're not from the same place. But um, uh-huh. having an open mind to me, like, it's actually okay that that's a word he uses. It's not a big deal. Gotcha. But again, but yeah. it's also not degrading. It's not something, it's not like he's calling me something bad. So it's a totally different, that would be different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good. Uh, compliments can be really sexy too. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Like, let's say you're texting back and forth and it's, you want to get it steamy. Mm-hmm. What are some things you can do even in that context to mm-hmm. kind of arouse and, and to get, get things going? Mm-hmm. I would say one of the best things to do, and this is something that, um, Seth and I talk about a fair bit on our podcast is like leaning into what the kind of like the core needs of your partner are. Like we all sort of know what, like we, you hear people talk about men want to be respected. Women want to be cared for, right? We know these things. So mm-hmm. what if you like lean into that? You lean into like, wait, what if I could make my husband feel so dang respected right now that it makes him into it? Or what uh-huh. if I could make my wife feel so taken care of right now that uh-huh. all the, like I say this to Seth all the time. Like there are certain things, like if he takes care of me, he's like, yep, I've done the dishes. They're already done. I've started a bath for you and I changed the oil in your car. Uh, I love you, sweetheart. I'm immediately like, where do you want another kid? I'm here for it. Like <laughs> it, it, tur- it hits all of those areas for me. So uh-huh. yeah, there's definitely a way where we can use like even our masculine and feminine differences and compliments like very pointed and focused and it doesn't take much to really ignite that within your spouse and it's really really fun to do that's good great okay let's end our interview with a few uh super practical like specifics we'll keep this all pg-13 yeah um but i think some people have never opened a book or never don't watch salacious movies or whatever Mm -hmm. yet they need good resources so we're going to provide them some Mm-hmm. Or you're going to provide them some, Melanie. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> can you give us a few example phrases that people can like hold on to and, and use? Mm-hmm. I want to do, let me see. I want to go like, I don't want to think of it in phrases. because I don't want people to think of like, oh, if I don't remember how to say this thing, then I'm going to fail. I want it to be almost like in acts, like little snippets of acts, right? So mm-hmm. whatever, again, this is hard because I'm talking about male and female at the same time. And I'm talking about, you know, obviously it's oh, okay. different. Should we pick man. one? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll First? just, I'll make some scenarios. I mean, it's kind okay. of, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh-huh. um, so I would think of let's find, let's make it like a tactical thing. I'm going to use the senses. I'm going to do the sexy story idea. And then also like the delivery side of it. So okay. again, if you're wanting to, like we talked about earlier, you wanting to create a scenario of something that couldn't actually happen. Like I'm not actually going to have sex on the top of the roof in Dubai, but uh-huh. man, what if I talked about it? Right. So uh-huh. you could say to your spouse, again, I'm going to start with a question. What do you think about the idea of us traveling to Dubai 
and we're wearing like, so again, I'm going to use all the senses. That's how I think. Mm -hmm. I immediately see in my mind, like we're, we have different clothes on. We have like, maybe I have on like a long flowing dress and it's really bright and we're on the rooftop, but when we can see the Burj Khalifa and the sand and it's the sun is setting, what would you think if I bent down and started to give you X, Y, and Z, uh -huh. right? So you're setting a scene, you're creating an act, and then mm -hmm. you're asking your partner, what do you think about that? Right. Gotcha. So that's a good uh -huh. setup, like a kind of like a softball. You're lobbing it that way. And then if uh -huh. they say, yes, I would like that, you continue with your story. Right. <laughs> gotcha. So you talk uh -huh. about what does that look like? Okay. So if I'm going to do that thing that you just said yes to, that means that we're going to find a seat somewhere on the top of this building and I'm going to be holding my dress and you can see my flip flops or whatever the thing is. Right. And we're like, walk right. over. Right. So again, you're setting the scenes and slowly creating what is the act that I'm doing? Maybe it's oral sex. Are there other people around? Is there nobody around? Is it nighttime? Is it daytime? And you're set, you're, you're just creating it and then adding as you go. Right. Uh -huh. So in that one act can move on to another act. Right. So it maybe it starts with oral sex, but again, think of it in a story. It's like a plot storyline uh -huh. and you can make it up as you go. No big deal. But like that one act can turn into something else, right? Maybe it switches mm -hmm. then and he's doing something for her. Or maybe you go from the rooftop to the balcony or the swimming pool or the sand dunes. I don't know. That sounds painful, but <laughs> that's always an option <laughs> or the back of a car. I don't know. Um, uh -huh. So that, that is like an act idea that I think helps you understand how you could kind of create that scenario and share it. On the flip side of that, you could also do the like, hey, do you like it when we, right? So this uh -huh. would be based off of something that you enjoy, but maybe you're embarrassed to share, right? Uh -huh. So this this might be something like, actually, for some women, they actually don't, there's a like a myth or a thing floating out there that women don't like oral, like giving man, men oral sex. And mm -hmm. some women love it. Some women really like it. And they so get if you're really turned on, right? That. Yeah. And we if you're a, someone in our podcast just last week about that, right? If you're a mm -hmm. woman that really likes giving oral sex to your husband, but you're embarrassed by that because societal society tells you, you shouldn't, mm -hmm. you can bring that to your husband and be like, Hey, do you like it when I do X, Y, and Z? And he uh -huh. will say, yes. <laughs> and then uh -huh. you might say, what do you like about it? And then uh -huh. that's his opportunity to tell you more. I like it when you do this thing or you nibble here or lick there, whatever the thing is, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And then that will enhance and sort of draw out in more detail. Not only are you thinking about it, then y'all can go ahead and do it, right? So that's uh -huh. that's a way to bring it. I'm trying to think if there's any other scenarios that would be helpful to hear, like for people who are just sort of stumbling. I guess let me do it from a man's perspective, and you can help me with this too, because I've been speaking a lot yep. from a woman woman's perspective to her uh -huh. husband, but the other way around, um, I think of if Seth were to tell me a sexy story, this is just mm -hmm. kind of what I'm thinking right off the bat. I would not want to feel like I had to then go perform that sexy story for him. I would uh -huh. want to be a, like a observe. I would want to be like able to be in the moment and hear it and listen without feeling like I've got to now do this thing. And so I think that if you're a, a man talking to your wife, really make sure that it's in almost like in that imaginary realm. Like, can you imagine that we are, you know, in some place or location or we're on vacation or whatever, gotcha. uh, you know what we're I mean? Back and in the middle ages. Or yes, some, there we some go. We're, different context that you yes, don't Yes, totally live in. different. Uh -huh. Yes. Right. And, uh -huh. uh, and then the man would explain, can you imagine this thing? And what if I did this to you? Like, it's a what if it's not like now we have to. Because I think uh -huh. that that for women too can be very, uh, there can be like a guarded feeling of like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this thing he just talked about. So it's different if he goes, can you imagine what that would be like? Or I've sometimes thought about this thing. What do you think about it? Like making it a conversation. So it feels open and okay and safe. And like at, if at any point I say, I don't like that, it's okay to stop that if we need it to. I don't think we're mm -hmm. going to stop. Making it feel like a conversation can mm -hmm. make it feel safer. Um, what are your thoughts? I don't know. Is there anything that I missed from a guy's perspective, you think? No, I think one more thing is uh, just play with masculine and feminine mm -hmm. energies. Mm -hmm. And only 80% of men prefer the masculine energy in sex. 20% mm -hmm. of men prefer more 
to be chased and to be submitted to. And mm -hmm. flip side for women too, eighty percent ish of women like to, you know, be the be the ones seduced. But mm -hmm. there's a small percentage that like to be more the dominant type. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you know, quote unquote masculine energy. So it's, I'm not talking about men and women, but so play with those masculine feminine energies. So it's a very mm -hmm. masculine energy to kind of tell the feminine like what you're going to do and mm -hmm. like, do this. Like mm -hmm. I remember telling my wife once like, Hey, flash me. Mm -hmm. And I said it in a very authoritative voice mm -hmm. and it was a turn on for right. her and right. it was a turn on for me too, what followed. But like, yeah. like there's, you can like do just be a little more like step into that dominant role. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I'll use a line like Mrs. Purcell, it's <laughs> time that I take you to bed. Like she loves hearing that. It's like, right. That's brilliant. <laughs> right. It's, it's a good line. And uh, it's because it's playing with our masculine feminine like mm -hmm. roles yeah. a bit it, and uh, mm -hmm. in that sexual realm. So yeah, like I lean into that and like just exaggerate it just a little bit. I'd say like Absolutely. caricaturize it just a little yeah. bit. So it's kind of funny mm -hmm. and it's, I don't know, it's, it's playful that way. But right. in the end. I like what we're saying. You have these conversations with your spouse. You can practice alone if you're awkward, but like mm -hmm. start trying to do things. And when your spouse does something that you kind of you don't like, mm -hmm. like can you be open about it? Like what you said, and like just give them gentle feedback. Like, hey, right. let's let's do a redo on that. Right. Go back. Oh, and, like, even better. Let me this. tell you uh -huh. what you can do because uh -huh. this is all imaginary. You can just change the yes. scenario. It's like, yeah. choose your own adventure. Nothing's uh -huh. set in stone. So if they uh -huh. say something that you're like, Ugh, gag me, I'm not uh -huh. into that. You can right. literally just with, and this is, I think, a much more help. I'm glad that you said that because this is an opportunity where you can just rewrite that part of the story without making uh -huh. them feel bad. Because that's what, definitely what could happen is that, let's say Seth suggests something that I'm like, that's so gross, or I would never do that. that do you don't need to say that. You can be like, or what if instead of having sex in the mud, we went to a hotel in Paris and had big, huge windows and coffee. I don't know. Like, what if we did that instead? Like, I, not that mud sex is bad. I'm just saying. Uh, like, you just you just rewrite the story and you sweep uh -huh. the energy. And I love that you said masculine and feminine energy. I think the biggest takeaway in all of this is that these sexy stories are all about the energy they create and inspire in each of you. They're all about the energy that is sort of carried forth and brought forth and invoked or whatever from the, um, the conversations that you're having. And so don't think too much on, is the topic what I want to talk about? Is the act what I want to do? It's what's the energy, right? So let me yes. use a perfect example. Uh, this is going to be a really, really random example, but we were just in Venice Beach in California at the skate park. And there's a million skaters, roller skaters, rollerbladers, skateboarders. Some roller skaters, although they're on the same thing as other roller skaters, some of them look like they've roller skated for nine seconds and they're going to break their wrist. Other roller skaters can dance and go backwards and do spins. And there's the, the difference is like the energy, their skill level and all that stuff. But the energy feels so different from I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm going to fall, I'm going to fall to I got this. I'm dancing. Look at this move. Have you seen that? Like, so the energy is so different. And so I think a lot of people are worried about the checklist. Like, did I say the right word? Did I say, did I talk about the right act? Did I talk about the right location? Don't worry about that as much as the energy that you're bringing, right? Mm -hmm. Think of being a magnetic attract, like your, the story you're sharing, even if it's about a farm in Iowa, could be about anything, mm -hmm. could be milking cows, I'm milking cows and a farm in Iowa. That's kind of uh -huh. a boring setting, but I guarantee you I could make it sexy <laughs> because of the energy <laughs> that I can bring to that. So yes. sexy is not necessarily an externalized thing. It's an energy. It's, it's an not a energy script. That you, yeah. 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 Uh, either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the so, energy you bring. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And having an open energy and excited energy and inviting and accepting energy is going to go so much further than just being like, I'm trying to be sexy right now. Like that's not a good energy, you know? No. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. <laughs> no. This has been so good. So helpful. If people want to hear more about you and what you do, where do they go? They can listen to us on the Anatomy of Us podcast. We also have Anatomy of Sex, which is a Patreon show that we do every single Friday. Um, we have a website where you, we do coaching. So I do 
uh, coaching with, we do couples coaching and individual coaching and it's all just follow us on Instagram and Facebook at anatomy of us everywhere. So yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. We hope that you enjoyed this episode of Get Your Marriage On. And if you did, we would love it if you would take a few seconds to give us a rating on iTunes and to share the show with your friends. They'll thank you for life. Once you've done that, you can head over to GetYourMarriageOn.com for more resources about today's topic and to download our amazing marriage apps. Now go get your marriage on. <laughs>